my name is Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety and welcome to this Variety Streaming Room with Unpregnant. Please join me in welcoming the women behind this very funny and very timely comedy. We have director and co-writer Rachel Lee Goldenberg. Hello. And actors Haley Lou Richardson and Barbie Ferreira. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Of course, before we get into uh, talking about the movie, why don't we take a look at a clip that sort of sets up uh, uh, the premise of the film. So I would love to start at the beginning with Rachel, who co-wrote the script based on the book by Ted Kaplan and Jenny Hendricks. Uh, how did this story find come your way and what interested you in uh, telling it on the screen? Uh, the, the short answer is that my agent sent me the book, uh, but the slightly longer answer is that I was sort of on um, a journey to talk about abortion as much as I could. I, um, I had an abortion years ago and then didn't really tell anyone and sort of made the made an unconscious decision not to tell anyone, just told my mom and told a couple of friends, but it was like, oh, this isn't something we really talk about in polite conversation. And then um, I read an article uh, maybe four years ago that talked about how as recently as the 80s, it was actually much more talked about and that, uh, and that you know, celebrities would be on magazine, in, you know, on magazine covers and signing letters and saying that they'd had abortions and that in the intervening years, the you know, abortion became less talked about and the laws became more restrictive. And so not talking about it was my own, was sort of its own political decision that I hadn't realized I was making. And so I sort of went the other way of talking about it as much as I could talking about mine, uh, talking about just the issue of abortion. And so uh, my agent was aware of that. So when she, when she saw the book, she sent it my way. Wow. And when you read the book, I mean, it, it balances all these tones. It's funny. And, you know, there's moments of, of real emotion and kind of also these moments of, of first love. I mean, was it intimidating to think about, you know, balancing that that's such a delicate balancing act, adapting that to film? I have to say that was actually maybe even more exciting to me than the abortion topic itself. Um, I love sort of weird tones and I love when I read the book, how many options of, I mean, how many genres it felt like you could jump into and just, you know, the fact that people, if it's something that people are worried if it's going to work or not, that makes me excited about it um, to dig into the comedy and the drama and balance that out and figure that out. And, you know, I was, wasn't just looking for, oh, I just want to tell any, any old abortion story. It sort of felt like this movie felt like a, a kind of fun and exciting and had heart and just had a lot of elements that, that attracted me to it. And obviously it doesn't work without the perfect cast, which you got. Um, Haley and Barbie, how did you become aware of this project and what interested you in your roles? And Barbie, correct me if I'm wrong, this is your first film? Yeah, it's my first. Well, I, I, I did a movie before and I had one line and I got cut out of it, but this is my first official movie. Oh, <laughs> I think I never said dual check from it though, still, so it's nice. But <laughs> I had one line, I got cut out of it, but this is officially my first movie. <laughs> um, I got the script through my agent. And I read it and I was like, this is actually like something I've never seen before. And I'm always attracted to things like that, where it's like dealing with something that is so taboo and kind of like not polite conversation, things that people like, you know, have a hard time um, articulating something super political, like people's choices to their bodies and also make it like this like fun comedy road trip, best friend movie. I was like, this is like incredible. This is like exactly... Uh, what I was looking for, something that was out of the box, something that was different than what I was already doing and would just challenge me and also be really fun to do. So it was just like, I went in and auditioned a few times and thankfully it worked out. <laughs> Haley, what about for you? What attracted you to this story? Um, first of all, Barbie, I didn't know that you were cut out of a movie. You know what? No hard feelings. It really, <laughs> yeah, that's, that makes, oh, that's, I'm very well you couldn't have been cut out of this movie because it wouldn't have I'm made it. Not. <laughs> I made sure of it. Uh, but it would have been really hard. <laughs> yeah, <it's> hard. <laughs> um so I guess what Rachel said when she was saying her reasoning about um how if something like scares or uncomforts or whatever other people, then that's like something that she wants to do. Is that something that you said? Did you say that or did I make that up? something along those lines. Well, this definitely like when my agents called me up and they were like, well, first Rachel texted me and then my agents called me up and they were before reading the script, they were like, it's <laughs> an abortion comedy. And they were trying to describe that to me without me having read the script. And I was so confused and I was so 
kind of, I don't know if full on scared is the right word, but I was like very unsure about it. And I was like unsure if that was going to be like possible to explore in a way that like made sense and did that topic any good. And um, then I read the script and talked with Rachel and did the movie and now it all makes sense to me. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Rachel, obviously you put together the perfect cast, but you could, can you sort of talk about what you were looking for with your two leads? Uh, it turned out I was looking for Haley and Barbie was what, was what it was. I mean, I, so I had, Haley and I were already friends. We had worked on a, a movie years ago together and I um, just loved everything about her performance and her whole vibe on set. And so she had sort of been in the back of my mind for a while for anything that I could work with her on. <laughs> and then, uh, and then when I started working on this movie, it felt like, oh, this is, this is going to be the Haley thing. I just have to get Haley to believe that <laughs> too. Um, and then, and then with Barbie, it was, she, you know, she came into the audition and I was, I was a huge fan of of euphoria, but I, this is such a different role. And so I was curious what she would bring. And it was just so apparent immediately, you know, the, not only what she brought to, to Bailey, but then also their chemistry together. We did, you know, we did, um, a chemistry read and they had to do the scene from the, uh, from the carnival ride where they're, they're in chairs, just acting out all of the literal highs and lows of that scene. And it was like magic, like that audition video was like not only the entire part of the movie, but it was the thing that I could show to the studio and to everyone to be like, look, this is going to work and it's going to be great. Like, here they are. They love each other already. And they, and, you know, it just sort of their, you know, it was all about their chemistry and sort of how they played off of each other. Actually, before we go any further, let's take a look at another clip that really shows the chemistry between the two actors and Veronica and Bailey for that matter. Baylonica. The film does hinge so much on your chemistry. And uh, I think it's interesting that you auditioned with the carnival scene, because did you guys have to pretend you're on a carnival ride or did you, you really did. Yes. Oh, we went for it. It was, oh, it was a lot of screaming. It was a lot of just like, I did it with a few other potential Baileys, not the Bailey, but, um, and it was, a, it was kind of exhausting and it was so uncomfortable, but I like, because it's, first of all, auditions are so kind of awkward in general. Cause you're not just like when you're on set, you're completely making up a world and using your imagination, but you have like the whole set and other actors to play with as if it's more real, but in an audition, you're just complete pulling it out of your bum. So, <laughs> but then when you're asked to do a scene like that in an audition, it's like, you really have to pull a lot out of your bum. Yeah, there's a and lot of it, pulling. <laughs> that, that actually was part of the reason is because it's not, you know, because, because it is uh, a scene that you can't actually do that well without the ride. Like there's no way <laughs> to really <laughs> have that ever look like the scene's gonna look. And so what I liked about it was that it, it asks people to go out of their comfort zone and like get weird. And I just wanted authenticity and weirdness from these ladies. And so I knew that if someone can pull that off, then they're going to bring that sort of energy and sort of bizarre, whatever, whatever bizarre energy they can bring to that, they'll be able to bring to other scenes that are harder to sort of find that in an audition. So it sounds like the chemistry was there from the start. And then you got to spend a lot of time together working on the movie and, and, and bonded even more. Oh yeah, in Albuquerque, we were there for two months. It was a ride. <laughs> it was a ride. Barbie is my sister. Yeah, we were sisters and it was, we got through it. It was amazing. It was, we, we immediately, the, like, the first audition, we just started talking about waffles. I remember, oh. <laughs> what were we talking about? Colorful waffles we were talking about. It was a very um, nasty toilet humor conversation. But. Oh, those type of waffles. Yeah, the, the, the waffles that like, I was I was, well, we're not, we'll not, we won't, we'll spare everyone. <laughs> we were talking about like toilet, immediately just got into being disgusted. It was great. Fun times. I so love it. Uh, how else did you go about preparing for these roles? Was, you know, <laughs> there any special research you took on? Did you, Haley? Um, well, I really did want to, I mean, I have my personal, just like instinctual feelings and beliefs towards the conversation of abortion um, as a woman girl person. Um, but I really did want to 
first of all, really figure out Veronica, just aside from the situation she's in and who she is and really like her. And Rachel and I had a lot, a lot of conversations about her um, and finding that balance to not make her just this like very stereotypical, like type A popular girl like there because because of like I don't know just finding the root of why she feels like she has to try so hard so I really wanted to understand her and so I so I could personally have empathy for her um, no matter what decisions or what she goes through in her life and then hopefully the audience would as well Um, but then I also wanted to just kind of become more educated in general on um I don't know, just the the topic of abortion. And I watched a bunch of different videos and I talked to Rachel and I talked to, um, or I watched a bunch of interviews of a bunch of different women who've all gotten abortions. And a big thing that I saw was just how personal of an experience and a choice it is. And that, and I I, I don't know, um, that helps me. I'm blabbling, but um, I haven't really talked to a lot of people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um that helped me to figure out that more grand picture of it all yeah I feel similarly I had just gotten out of playing a teenager for eight months and it was a very different character than Bailey so for me it was kind of um I always like like to revisit my teens my preteen years because I was just so full of emotion and I always went through so many phases and whatnot so I kind of like always draw from those emotions and those feelings and Bailey like is the side of me that you know wore like gas station clothes and was like this perpetually emo perpetually like misunderstood but to her own like by her own doing kind of thing where you just (laughs) you you yourself are isolating yourself from other people and saying that you're different and it was really just about um making sure Bailey's character was like a real person and not like this um just like kind of this, this running gag or someone who like, you know, comes in, says something funny and like walks out. I really wanted her to have like depth and like anxiety and, and, you know, as young people do and as a lot of people do, it's just like, how do we make her into like this full fledged person who is funny, but mostly just like in, in, in like her mannerisms and in her everyday life. And that was really fun. And it was fun to kind of create the outfit, the hair. I like to work outwardly in. And then I start just like, I'm in New Mexico with like green hair, like wearing like gas station t-shirts. And then I just like start feeling it. And I'm like, okay, we're getting into it. And, you know, kind of just making sure that it was all um, heartfelt and Bailey felt like, like I gave her justice. And yeah, so it was a lot of that kind of in a similar vein. I mean, Rachel, I, I asked at the beginning about, you know, all the different tones in the book and, and balancing that. When you actually get on set, how were you able to sort of preserve that tone? I shouldn't say tone. It's it's more than one, um, you know, especially when you're shooting probably on a tight schedule. And, you know, sometimes you're veering from really emotional scenes to like almost like outrageous comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, there's a range for sure. Um, it did. It, it helped that I got to do a pass on the script because I had a really deep understanding of every scene and why it was in the movie and sort of choosing to, you know, for example, the ride when, when they're going to be super, super earnest, then maybe we'll put them in a wild situation so that that doesn't fall into like a saccharine place, but instead it falls into like a comedic and emotional place or, you know, the other time that they have a really um, very genuine, sweet conversation, they've just tasered someone um, and are running on the adrenaline high from that. And so sort of like undercutting the some of the deeper emotional stuff with chaos or comedy, I think is part of that journey. But you know, it was, it was uh it was like a day, it was probably the thing I thought about the most every day. And you know, Haley and I would talk about it a lot for her character because she, because for Veronica, this is, you know, she's going through something real but the movie isn't supposed to feel dire and the, and the tone isn't supposed to feel heavy. And so Haley and I sort of working through her, making sure that she feels truth in the character and me making sure that we're in the tone of the movie was like a, you know, we were like in a, in a positive way, but like wrestling with like nailing that down. Um, Hard. I do, yeah. I do not expect that for, you can never expect anything, I guess, in life these days and in any way, but um <laughs> But uh, yeah, I did not expect 
that to be such a challenge, like for me to navigate and figure out, but, um, literally every day. And I don't really feel like I ever was like, (laughs) and Rachel and Barbie both know this, but like, I don't feel like any scene happened or anything like ever clicked. And I was like, Oh, that's how to do it. Like every day I had to like figure it out again. And every scene I felt like I had to like figure it out again. And it was a challenge, but I, I mean, I'm pretty proud of us because I watched the movie and I'm like, oh shit, like it works. You know, there's just so much inherent comedy in, in life. And in, you know, because for, for me also the guiding principle, you know, when, when, uh, when people in bad faith have said, oh, this, this movie thinks abortion is funny. It's like, that's, we're never making jokes about abortion. All the jokes are coming from why is it so hard to get this abortion? Like, why is this journey so hard? And so that really frees us to, to let inherent humor. I remember the, um, like the, Barry, do you remember the, the guitar thing in the, in the pawn shop where it was like, it's scripted as just like this one little, um, she's supposed to strum this guitar that's, that's electric guitar that's plugged in and it makes this loud sound and it kind of breaks you know kind of makes everyone jump you know it was supposed to be like this one-off thing and then when Barbie did it she couldn't get it to be quiet in our rehearsal and she just made it so funny once we realized that that she did you know that we just started playing it as long as we could get it to go and that was her just discovering that thing and realizing it was funny and becoming you know like one of the sillier jokes that just keeps going (laughs) (laughs) yeah I think for me I'm always attracted to dark comedy and like comedic situations around a pretty dark situation is like the only way that I will get through anything so it always confuses me when people are like they think abortion is funny I'm like first of all no that was not the point of the movie but secondly it's like people these two teenage girls are like on a road trip and there's going to be funny moments and awful moments and regardless of what the end result of this road trip is for it's not like they're going to be you know these like one-dimensional just like there's different experiences in those things And that's really what was attracting me to the script was that like, it felt truthful, but also different than what we usually see. And sometimes it's funny and kind of horrifying. Like when you have anti-abortion activists chasing you, you know, in real life. Even though they're extras, I was like. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. Going into the actual clinic. And that was intense that, well, when, yeah, shit. When we were doing the scene, actually going, driving into the clinic and all those extras were like, they're, um, you know, protesting and everything that was, that felt very real and intense. That yeah. actually shocked me in my core. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I actually want to talk about the rest of this amazing cast, but why don't we take another look at a clip from the film first? You have such a, a great ensemble here. You have everyone from veteran character actors like Giancarlo Esposito to Betty Who, who is a wonderful new talent. Um, Rachel, can you kind of talk about putting this ensemble together? And, and Haley and Barbie, I would love to hear about working with all these amazing actors. Yeah, I mean, it was just it was just uh, the adventure that is casting of sort of, you know, finding people that I... I mean, Giancarlo was my my dream for this role from the beginning. I love the idea that because this character is supposed to feel sort of um, terrifying initially, and then and then there's more to it that I loved sort of, you know, not beyond his talent, just sort of the perception of him. He told me that people um, like strangers are sometimes scared of him because they know of his, his role. Um, so, you know, playing into that perception. And then a couple of the actors like Alex McNichol, who plays Kevin, and um, Mary McCormick, who plays uh, uh, Haley's mom, Veronica's mom. They, I've worked with both of them before, so I was just pulling in people that I knew <laughs> that uh, would would nail it. And then, yeah, I mean, it was it was just you know, it's it's the process of finding the right the right person for each role, and and really doing a, a deep dive. I think casting's you know the most important thing you can do because that's that's really going to be the movie. So uh, making sure that we had the right person for each each role, which, you know, of course, 90% of our job was done once we got these two, but from going from there. Can I ask what the most challenging role was to cast? What was the most challenging role? Um, Oh, I don't know if it was the most challenging, but the, but uh, Sugarland Beard plays Kate, one of the, one of the the couples, the, um, you know, the, I don't know how much we want to spoil, but um, she, she plays a complicated, uh, character that that 
ends up being sort of evil. And people, <laughs> that was one of those roles that uh, people wanted to sort of, most people that we saw come in for it really wanted to do sort of an over the top version of it. Like they sort of thought that they were supposed to play a saccharine character because it was really bad or something. And she just found the perfect level of nuance. She was, that was one of the auditions where she just came in and did like every line, she found something to do with it and made it deeper and made it more than, than, uh, than I had seen anyone else do. So that was one that I was sort of stuck on until she came in. And Haley and Barbie, it must be so cool to like show up on set and one day you're working with Giancarlo Esposito and the next day you're working with Mary McCormick. Um, what were some of your favorite moments and scene partners? I think everyone that I worked with was like really, really like amazing. I actually just started watching Breaking Bad. I'm so late and I'm like, oh my God, Giancarlo. <laughs> I just started watching him on season four and I'm like, oh my God. I like, he's so talented and so incredible. And I've always known about his role in Breaking Bad. And I finally am like watching it and I'm like, holy crap, like he's the most iconic person on earth. But he is like, remember when he just stabbed the can with like, <laughs> he is like, he went for it. I was like, oh my God, I want to reach the level of this man. Like he's an icon and a genius. And he just like went for it and like played it so perfectly. Like he's incredible. Um, Betty Who was amazing. I, <laughs> there were like so many parts to that scene where it's like, it was like down, down a slide and then it was like this glowing like like um like a ball pit there was like you know this carnival everything was so sweet and like everyone was so talented and just incredible so I mean they're all great how about you Haley well I was gonna say that I loved working with you the best oh <laughs> um I genuinely love love Barbie and loved working with Haley so much oh I miss um, you I know I miss you too. Uh, and I also, yeah, it, it is cool kind of looking back at it. Cause I don't know. And it's, it's cool doing these type of interviews so long after when we did it, it's very like reflective and you feel like you can see it, the, the big picture. Um, but yeah, it was really cool because it felt like the whole conversation of tone that we were talking about, like it really relied on those other characters and the actors that play those characters and like stepping into like a new bit of the, like new world of the movie, like every, it seemed like every week was like a different, a total different vibe because of the people we were working with and the part we were focusing on. Um, but I always cracked up with Alex <laughs> because he's hilarious. Like he's, first of all, the character, like the character, he's, the way Alex played him, like he's so dumb. And like, and that's harmful, the, how much he doesn't know. You know, that's what's harmful about that character. It's not that he's a terrible person. He's just doesn't know and he's so dumb. And Alex did that in a way that was like, it was this perfect balance of making me be like, oh my God, like I just wanted to shake him. But also like, come on, like there's hope for you. Like you can learn and be better. So I thought for some, I don't know. I thought he was amazing. <laughs> you have such a talented ensemble, but I know you're probably also on a schedule. Was there much room for improvisation? Um, I think of I think of improv as as um like either you're in like deep comedy world that that this movie's never like never quite in like the totally goofy comedy like just try a bunch of stuff and like let the scene goes go where it goes and you know because I've certainly done that sort of thing on other projects. You know, I I sort of am a strong believer that you have as much time as you need. And so we're we're not that we were relaxed all the time. Like certainly we were always on a pace, but but we would do as many takes as we needed to do. And we would try things. And you know, we had a lot of like one one great thing is that we had time um in rehearsal to go over the script and they would read the scenes and we would see if things didn't feel right and we would take notes and we, you know, I I could adjust things as we went. So I don't know if it was like tons of improv so much as us just making sure that we found the scenes and certain things like the you know uh like like their their big fight was one of those things where we had rehearsed it and we had made changes and then still on the day we were continuing to sort of find it and be like oh that line's not feeling right or we're using too many words here that we don't need all these words <laughs> um so uh so I feel like there's just there's you know a tight schedule and we just take the time we need to make sure that we 
get things where we want them. Uh, let's take a look at one more clip from the film. You mentioned this movie is very funny, but it also has, you know, these very emotional scenes. For each of you, what ended up being the most challenging part of making the film? If there was a particular scene or, you know, maybe just, you know, being in these characters' heads sometime. I think for me, the most challenging scene, Bailey speaking to her father, I think that was extremely challenging because I feel like for most of the movie, I kept the emotions really inward. And, you know, as a character trait, Bailey's kind of like uses humor to deflect and, you know, kind of runs away from her feelings in a lot of ways. So finding what the appropriate amount of emotion would be with that um, and it being like really close story to myself as well, like my own life, it was just like, it was hard to navigate it and separate myself from it and also and bring Bailey in and not like, you know, mistake that or like muddle those two in and bringing those experiences and making sure it was like true and not, um, and just like totally correct. So that was definitely a very hard scene for me. I remember that day, it was like, I was beating myself up a lot that day. <laughs> I was like, gotta, gotta, yeah, I gotta do it. But it ended up doing, it ended up like being fine. And as it always does, usually, hopefully, um, thankfully. <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was tough that day. I mean, it's, it's a heartbreaking moment. And obviously I know you have to do a lot of difficult scenes on Euphoria. Do you have a, a, a way to sort of like decompress at the end of the day? Or are you the kind of actor who takes your work home with you? Um, yeah, I feel like if I get myself to a place where I'm like, you know, ready to be emotional, for me, it takes time and like intention. Like I can't just like turn it on. I, some people are blessed with that. Like I can't, I have to like really spend like hours in like a headspace. And um, when I get home, um, especially like this season, like there's a lot of like emotion and stuff. I, um, the one that we're shooting, it's, I like to just watch like mindless reality TV and just like try to just like, you know, go to sleep really early and, um, you know, wake up and have a fresh new day. Cause it's, it's hard to get out of that. Sometimes I can't sleep after for a while and I have to like really just get it back in. Haley, what about for you? Veronica obviously goes through so much. What was the most challenging part for you? Well, um, the most challenging part for me was kind of what I've already talked about. It wasn't really a particular scene. It was just like getting that balance of the tone and also the truth of what she's going through, um, which again, was an everyday, <laughs> every scene struggle for me. Um, but I feel like with the more emotional scenes, or I guess more like the scenes where a character finally says what they mean or says what they feel, because like so much in life and then also in movies, because they reflect life, um, we like use code, we like talk about things in codes or we avoid things or we don't like just speak our truth and say what we actually are feeling. And Veronica especially is just like suppressing so much of what she's feeling the whole movie. And then like throughout it, there's these moments where she like has these releases where she finally says something. And I feel like the first one is the ride where she like admits or acknowledges or releases. And then you know, there's obviously the train track scene, <laughs> um, which is a big, yeah, a very big truth speaking moment. Uh, and then, um, and then some conversations that Veronica and Bailey have where they like really say how they feel. And then the scene at the end with Veronica and her mom. And those scenes where a character is like actually saying what they really mean and what they feel are, they are tricky because it's so, for some reason, that, that's so much harder than not speaking your truth. I don't know why it is that way in acting and in life, but like, mm -hmm. it's also so cathartic because when you're done with that scene or in real life, if you're speaking your truth to someone, you're like, oh shit, like I got it out. Like, <laughs> I'm, this is how I'm, this is what I'm supposed to say. This is how I'm supposed to feel. And I'm still okay. So they feel very like therapeutic and cathartic for me at the end of the day. And I, unlike Barbie, get really good sleeps <laughs> at the end of days where I have scenes like that because I just feel like I've released so much. It's like draining in a way. Absolutely. 
Rachel, what about for you? I mean, this is a road trip movie with a pretty big ensemble. Uh, you have stunts, you have, you know, all, all these wonderful <laughs> tones. What was the biggest challenge for you? Um, you know, the, the nice thing is that the thing that that makes me the the most unhappy, and unhappy is probably even an understatement, is when I we is when I finish a scene or a day and feel like I haven't gotten what I need or I didn't get everything I could. And that's that's like really, really hard. And we had so few of those on this movie. Like I really, you know, I really felt like we had it and I was happy. And so the the hardest part was really all the other elements of of feeling bad that other things were hard. You know, like like if Haley was having a hard time with the scene and I would feel terrible for her, but I would tell her, but the good news is the movie's going to be good, <laughs> you know? Um, but so, you know, and like they, I mean, we haven't hit on it, but it was like freezing when we were shooting this and we were shooting these action scenes and they were, I mean, or, or, or even that night, that night where they're out um, camping outside where we had to VFX remove Barbie's breath a few times and they're in like summer clothes. And so it was, they were like really hard core, like, like survival challenges on some days. And so me just feeling bad for them, for them going through that and for the crew who's freezing and like, you know, me like warming Barbie up as she's like shivering in like her little gas station the sweater. Um, like those were, that was the hardest part, but it, but because I was coming from a place of, well, selfishly, I feel like the movie is going well, you know, it's sort of like it, it balanced out with just, you know, me trying to be a support and me feeling confident that we were kind of getting what we needed. Yeah. I mean, obviously the movie has already sparked a lot of conversation. What is it you really hope people walk away from this film with? I, I, I mean, my, my goal from the beginning and still is, is just that I just want to normalize and destigmatize abortion. I want people to be able to say the word. I want people to know that they can talk about it and that their friends can talk about it and that, you know, most Americans support abortion and that, and that that fact is purposely hidden. And so I just want that that to be out there in the biggest way possible. And, I, and I'm really proud that we were able to show the process of, of what a surgical abortion entails, because I feel like even me going in, because um, I hadn't had a surgical abortion, had no idea what that was like. And I've gotten just a lot of feedback that's warmed my heart about people sort of feeling like they learned a lot from that and it, and it, and it you know, took away a lot of stigma for them. And that it shouldn't be this difficult. People should not have to cross state lines for this. Yes. <laughs> Haley and Barbie, what about for you? I feel like something that's so beautiful about the movie is the just how every person in all of the relation, all of the like main relationships, or at least I feel like with Veronica, her relationship with Bailey, they could not be more just opposite people. They've obviously grown in different directions. They've hurt each other because of the, those different growths and the things they've gone through. They see the world differently. They are looking at this, even though they're on the same mission to help Veronica, you know, get an abortion. Um, sh they see the situation differently and um, they've been raised differently. And in the end, they like, see those differences and they respect and love those differences and they love each other and they're stronger because of one another and I feel like that or that relationship with Veronica and her mom and the rest of her family which we don't really get to see that much but I would imagine obviously that um they're very different and their part how they've raised her as part of this like extreme <laughs> pressure that she puts on herself um to be perfect for them and for other things and uh and in the end there's no matter what she did no matter how they see the world no matter what their choice is um they love each other and they respect one another and they can hold each other and be stronger for that and I think that's a very beautiful thing oh that's gorgeous I like I agree with both of you and I also I feel like my mission with this is young people who watch it and who like have their answers, like get have their questions about abortion answered, kind of um, setting the tone of like, we can talk about things like this, you know? I feel like for me, 
when I was, you know, a teenager or preteen and I'm watching movies and watching things that I really connect with, those like really change me and like kind of, you know, in my, uh, it like, it like shapes the way I see the world. And I hope that people watch this like really beautiful movie that is funny and has heart and is cute. And, you know, it's just like something that leaves you feeling really good when you end that movie, you know, like sometimes some movies do not do that. And I love those too, but this one is like, you end that movie like, oh, that was like really heartwarming. And I hope that it um, just for the younger people who are watching it can watch it and feel connected to it and be like, oh, like this is a moment in my life that I like clicked and I'd never heard about abortion or I don't talk about it. And now I kind of have like some information on it. So, yeah. And I want to remind everyone they can see the film currently on HBO Max. I want to thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you for spending time with us. And again, congratulations on beautiful work. Thank you so much. Thank you.